not 100% sure where we are. Um, I think there's a good chance we're actually driving towards enemy lines at the moment. This is broken and it's taken us <laughs> to the front line. Race the front line bit. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's just worth, mate. Driving. So, we've just been turned back at a checkpoint because they said if you go any further, the Russians are there. Um, and that's where Google Maps has been jammed, so it told us it was taking us back to the flat. They've waved us through the other checkpoints because we have special passwords and permissions, so we thought, eh, no problem, it's cool. Um, but no, mistakes were made. So, try turning it back to Karma Kid now. Yeah. Do you know what? That wakes you up in the morning for a thing that does. Yeah, and then boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Probably going to guess just from the driving I think that's a plane up there. I can hear something. Who knows what that is? We're Van to That Borders, a uh, humanitarian team who aid to provide short term aid to communities cut off from other help. So we go to places no one else goes to and we make sure that no one goes hungry in Ukraine. My name's Jack and I'm the founder. We're from Britain, we are Fenton. Hello. Our favourite Ukrainian soldier, Vova. All the way from the United States, Nick. And our Aussie cousin, Tony. G'day. We've got Steve from Britain. Yeah. Justin from Britain. Paul, who's 75 years old and it's incredibly come out from America. We've got Mouse from France. Elijah from the UK. Herr Lutz, Chris from Germany. Robert from Canada, another colonial cousin. And Darren from Wales. We also have a very important team member, Councillor Paul. Um, from Britain who bought himself a 7.5 ton lorry which has been transporting goods to us from across the Polish border keeping us resupplied at the front helping us keep the cost down so we can make sure that you know we can help the maximum number of people top guy maybe an APC I'm not too sure you can see the front gunner point there that's a show show us to Elijah for the camera So I've not seen this one before. This is a um, Sakar graveyard. You can see, someone was probably in this when it got hit because the airbag's gone off. It implies it was moving. Bullets through the front glass. Again, shooting at the driver here. That's clearly been run over by a tank or something. So this is quite cool. So next to all the buildings, they have a little bottle collection. I don't know if people drink them on site or um, bring them in from home, but this is so they can make Molotovs if they need to. Um, and then they have things like spike strips. Um. <laughs> Even in Ukraine, you can't escape it. One of the dangers of Ukraine, it doesn't seem hot, but as you can see, it is quite hot. Let's see your leg, mate. That's the driver side. <laughs> so since we were last here, the houses have been removed. Um, and so these guys are a volunteer group, locals, who are um, cleaning it up. There was lots of unexploded ordnance in it. They're not too sure why the houses got removed, I guess just to rebuild. So, and these guys just helping tidy it up, just to try and speed up the reconstruction process. This is where Bogdan, um, the chap in the wheelchair, and also the chess champion locally, um, lived. And he's coming back, uh, so he's been relocated, but his family's coming back because um, Steve has a present for him. Neighbor's house as well. There are some volunteers. And uh, she says that they would, they probably wouldn't survive on their own without volunteering. Just want to 
Check if you guys have got your sight card. Uh -huh. <laughs> Done your health and safety. Uh, yes, yes, no, excellent, excellent. Just on the motorway, awesome car. <laughs> Love it. So what have you found here, mate? So it's a plaque um, from someone from the Donetsk region. It's the Women's Institute for Democratic Development of the Local Community 2017. Sorry, 2019 even. It popped up outside. It outside yeah. So this is outside the Museum of Culture in Irpin, which was very heavily bombed and attacked by Russian soldiers. You can see here, been completely devastated and ruined by artillery and then machine gunned up the front. So again, this building held no strategic significance. The Russians attacked it to try and destroy morale locally and also try and eradicate bits of Ukrainian culture. And unfortunately, mission success, everything's been burnt to a crisp in there. So it's a bit of a rickety climb up. And this is the upper bits of the museum. Again, you can just see completely destroyed, blown apart. So you can see where shrapnel from this building over here, the Museum of Culture, has come through and just destroyed this banner of this young girl playing football. You can see the size, size of the holes and bits of metal that's gone through there. So this is my third time to actually visit this football pitch, which was destroyed back in March. And it's good to see some repairs have started going in. They've started to fill in the holes in the football pitch. So hopefully it'll be operational for the junior teams to play in again. But this is the director's box. And you can see us just being completely destroyed. The seats um, on this side are largely intact, which is great. But on that side, torn to pieces. You can see there's some kids playing back there. Again, trying to return to normality, trying to get that sense of local community back. Don't know if anyone's been using this since we were last here, but you can only hope, but there's still glass all over the pitch. So this is the bit under the stand. So I guess the old clubhouse. Watch your step because you don't know if there's unexploded ordnance in there. See all their football posters still up there. Looks like there's been a little little cleanup effort in here. So I've moved most of the rubble out of these, what I imagine were previously changing rooms. I think they work, you see the shower blocks and toilets back there. And it is a shame to see this. You can tell a lot of money had gone into developing this building. It's a lot nicer than my clubhouse back home. And you know, that's what makes it even sadder that this, this is a community trying to better themselves, invest a lot of money in developing it and you know putting it on the map. And now they've been forced back into the dark ages because of Russian aggression. So they filled in the mortar holes with um, those are AstroTurf bits.
so this has been turned back into a petrol station despite it being bombed into the wreckage and that's going on there. So there's a lot more people than when we've previously been here. You right, Darren? Not bad. How many people do you reckon there are here? 200, gotta be easy. Couple of hundred there. If not more, mate. <laughs> so we've had to do a bit of crowd control as well. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> so we're trying to line people up so they're not queued up on the road, but it's... So moving people. Try and speed it up a bit, alright? Try and speed it up, there's loads of people. This is incredible. Crunches are very much sought after here. It's not like the UK where you can go to doctors and get one prescribed or even go to a shop and buy them. There's a massive shortage across the country, so people are keen to get what they can. So we've had to go on a mid-session resupply, so we've got trolleys and trolleys of food. We've got all of their pasta in here, all of their tins of meat, and hopefully that's going to be enough to feed everyone, but we've had a confirmation from the team who are still at the um, at the location we're dropping the food off to and apparently the queue's not gone down at all. Right, so we're on our way back now. We've loaded up the van, all covered in sweat. Fair play to Robert for doing most of the stacking. <laughs> um, most of, right, yeah, most of. That, that's the polite way of saying uh, next to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're on our way back to make sure everyone's got enough food in yeah. Kharkiv. Uh, Let's pull up on the other there. side of Steve's vehicle. Okay. Fenton's just treating this kid here who um, has a burn mark on his leg. He had a dirty old bandage on it beforehand um, and he's told us he burnt his leg on a bomb site when he was sort of exploring the rubble. Uh, so Fenton's just cleaning it, took the dirty bandage off and putting a new dressing on. So we've just driven up to resupply here and we've just seen that the Atta Bay has been bombed. So it doesn't look like we'll be able to get more supplies here. Thanks to everyone in New Zealand for all of this. We're just stacking up now. Um, we're currently giving out food and we've run out. And thanks to your cash that you fundraised for us, um, we're able to resupply and make sure that no one gets left hun hungry. So we've just come back with more supplies and everyone's still here waiting in the rain to get fed. You know, they're coming back across now, queuing up to get food. It's heartbreaking. That's how desperate they are. They're gonna stand out in the torrential rain just to get some basic supplies. Queue's gone down a little bit, but the vast majority of people are still here and they're all looking after each other, gathering under each other's umbrellas. There's a great sense of community, you know, 20 miles from the Russian guns. Do me a favor, yeah, just hold that. <laughs> There's my Deutsch. <laughs> yeah. So we've had to erect a sort of temporary shelter going on and the locals are helping us keep the food dry. So the key is because we've got things like bread, they're not wrapped particularly well locally. Um, there is good quality food, um, but we didn't want it to get damaged in the rain. So there's nothing worse than queuing up all day than taking home soggy bread um, and dodgy tins, etc. So the locals are helping us keep the food dry. Um, still got a long queue. The rain's starting to ease up, which is great. And the queue is starting to go down, which is, you know, hopefully we're feeding the whole community here. So Darren's been an absolute hero throughout the torrential rain. He stayed out here, making sure the people who stayed in line didn't get hit by cars. As you can see, he's pretty soaked. 
um, and even so his walkie-talkie's broken from how wet it got, and this stuff's designed to, be, you know, take a lot of sea or damage. So yeah, well done, Darren. How you doing, Vova? You're remarkably very dry. Oh no, you are wet. I'm wet. So we're getting to the back of the queue now. Gone down massively, and you know it's fantastic to be able to feed everyone and have enough food. And not run out. We've done a couple of reloads at different shops, and you know it's it's worth every penny. So thank you so much for everyone's generosity. Thanks to you guys, we can make a massive difference here. So we're finally done. We've managed to supply you know at least a thousand people with food um, in a spot we pit up a few times before, but this time we let them know we were coming in advance and. There was hundreds of people just waiting for us we pulled in and we thought, ah, we don't have enough food. So we did a couple of food runs and managed to make sure that everyone had a little bit, which is great. What we do is short-term aid, so it's providing people with enough food for two, three days so they can start thinking how they can sort their lives out um, or even take the pressures off a little bit. Um, so yeah, you know, fantastic to get done. Teams over the moon that we've done it. Inducted a lot of the new guys and they all performed exceptionally and looking forward to tomorrow and helping more people. Yeah. So and there is their basement. Basement. Вот у нас собачка даже есть. Док. У нас там тоже. Да, у нас там тоже. Да, у So as you can see, it's very scarce down here. Children's school. Children's school. So this is where the kids go and learn. Yeah, and they use it like a shelter. So you can see it's very dire, this situation here. Very, very sad to see. It's got a very damp sort of smell, so when it rains really heavily, it's going to leak through. That's their, that's their whiteboard. You can see they got their bicycles here. Uh, it is quiet. Uh, children. Uh, Riding on a bicycle, yep. or a bombing, uh, or air air alarm, they save it here. Okay, so so when there's safe outside, they can get their bikes and go outside and enjoy themselves. And when it's bombing, they're going to be here and and they're going to be here and study. So look, they got a really basic screen. They got some Wi-Fi. You can see here some drawing of the building here. But look, I mean, it's absolutely flooded in here. And this is just the reality of the situation that these people are in. It's very, very sad. They try their best with cardboard to soak it up, but there's only so much cardboard that they can use before it. Uh, they are using this room like a kitchen. Yeah. Uh, where is bombing? So when it's bombed? Yeah, it's it's uh, shoulder kitchen. Yeah. Two months. Two months in here. Yeah. I mean, just imagine having to spend two months down here. Very rough. So that's what they, that's what they cook in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are cooking here yeah. for 138 people. 138 two people in two, two months. months. Two months, yeah. Uh, you see. My boots are really wet now from being in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this where they wash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They are washed their uh, dishes here and uh, their faces. Faces. Yeah, it's at the time when uh, there were bombardments and other stuff. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see in this shelter, the kids, obviously, due to being very bored when they're getting shelled really hard. 
They've been drawing on the walls. And this is where they sleep. people 24 people live in this room imagine having to cram 24 people in here when you're getting shelled very sad See, they've got multiple sort of makeshift beds, wooden pallets, sort of hospital stretcher beds. So, so how 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 long? Oh, and this looks like the where the parents will sleep. Got you know, sort of netting, I guess, for a bit of privacy. But apart from that, it's not much. This will be where they hang their clothes. <laughs> so this is their toilet. It's for a long time and do the colonization. And this is her house. In this place, sleeping uh, his mother and uh, son. Okay. How long did you have to stay down here for? Uh, when the war started. So the whole time. Yep. Okay, coming up five month mark now. And just imagine having to live in these conditions. 14 people live in this room. What's blue with them? Yeah, this is a house of this girl and this bed. Yeah, yeah, sure. I got it. In this place, uh, living uh, people with trouble in his uh, air. So asthma. Like asthma, uh, yeah. And, uh, you see the sheet here stops yeah. all the dust. Yeah. And. Obviously, it's not going to be the best condition for people with asthma to live in, but they sort of make do and they've done quite well at it, actually. It's definitely a lot dustier in here. So these aren't city workers here. These are um, volunteers who come out to sweep the streets up and keep the city clean to try and stop people um, from leaving, trying to show them that the city can still be nice, they can still live here. So the idea is they keep sweeping um, and keep people here, because if everyone evacuates, the city won't be able to survive. So they're doing everything they can to make it sort of hospitable again. So it's been chucking it down for about 20 minutes and people are still queuing up for food. Um, giving out bread, pasta, some clothing, some medical supplies, uh, meats and some other bits. Um, but people, you know, they're completely soaked here. They haven't got umbrellas. They're using plastic bags to cover themselves. Paul. Can you tell us what you're using as rain cover? A plastic bag. Is it working? Yeah. Excellent. It's very hipster, I love it. Are we arranging? <laughs> so even though it's absolutely chucking it down, people have still come out to collect food and other supplies that we're giving out at the moment. So we're nearing the end of the queue. Still loads of food and supplies left that we're giving out. So it's fantastic that everyone's getting a bit. We're not running out today. How'd you hurt your hand, Oleg? So, how did you do this? Take care of both people. So, so yesterday you pulled someone out of the rubble. Was that near here? Yeah. Yeah. 
Is the man okay? You helped me. That's all that matters. Is there, is there any glass still in there? No. Yeah, glass in the hand? Yeah. He said. I can't see any man. It's dirty though, you can um, see. I take care about this uh, by medicine. Uh, no, you don't need medicine, you need something. There's no glass. In it's why, uh, just. Maybe it means it got cut by glass. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just going to dress it for Ask me. Any more Wait. inspection. Tanya. Хорошо? <laughs> 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 Thank you.